Hello there. Today we're going to be discussing the tragedy of Domino Squad. So the Clone Wars TV show finished in 2020 and the one thing it, well, it did many things well, but one of those things it did really well was make you feel for the clone troopers, making them more than just a cool spectacle for the films. So many of you I'm sure have a favourite clone trooper, I could probably name a handful of them. So today I'm going to be talking about probably the best clone trooper unit and the tragedy that befell them. So this unit is Domino Squad, which was introduced to us in the episode Rookies. So the members of Domino Squad uh, then became recurring characters with their own arcs, triumphs and tragedies. And we're now going to look over this. So this video won't do justice to the bigger characters from Domino Squad, for example Fives and Echo, as they could both have entire videos made about them. But overall, we would explore Domino Squad as a whole and its tragedy. So first we will talk about the background of Domino Squad. So as with all clones, each member was a clone of the bounty hunter Django Fett and they were trained on Kamino before becoming members of the Grand Army of the Republic. So Domino Squad was made up of five members. We had Fives, Echo, Heavy, Cutup and Droidbait. And the uh, bounty hunters uh, Brick and LLS oversaw their training and this was completed once the squad had passed the Citadel Challenge. So having passed this test, Domino Squad was now ready to leave Camino and serve the Republic fighting the Separatist droid army. So Domino Squad's first assignment was one of utmost importance, being assigned to the Rishi Moon outpost. So this outpost was designed to uh, listen to oncoming ships and warn Camino if an attack was imminent. For the squad as a whole, the attack on this outpost was most tragic, with most losses being suffered, and we will get to this later. So before being stationed on Rishi Moon, Domino Squad had to pass the Citadel Challenge, and this is where their adventure begins. So we see this squad being unable to coexist, with Echo echoing orders, Heavy ignoring the team, and the squad falling one by one, like dominoes. So after getting a second chance at the Citadel Challenge, uh, Brooke decides to make it harder for them, uh, lowering the chance of his success, but the odds were irrelevant as the squad prevailed. So the only part of uh, this that could be well, described as actually tragic is the ending, where Heavy gives 99 his badge, saying he'll be back for it. And if we saw the first episode with Domino Squad in, we know this wouldn't be the case. So let's explore this episode now. So our clone troopers are stationed on the Rishi Moon outpost, before their separatists revealed a new droid, the Commando Droid, which attacked the station. So the droids infiltrated the base, and Domino Squad suffered its first casualty, droid bait. True to his name, he was shot down by the commando droids. So the rest of the squad managed to escape the outpost, but then they suffer another casualty. Cutup was taken by a Rishi eel and probably eaten alive, which was suffering quite an unpleasant fate. But compared to the rest of the squad, not all that bad. So now Domino squad is down to three, and they meet with Captain Rex and Commander Cody, and they devise a plan to retake the listening post. So the clones quickly realise that they can't hold the base, so fill it with liquid to burn it, which is an explosive gas which would destroy the base, telling the public that Camino was not safe. So the plan almost worked to perfection, but the remote to set off the explosion wouldn't work. It had to be done manually, so Heavy was the clone trooper who decided to stay behind and blow the base, the droids and himself up, being the third casualty of Domino Squad, and never returning to Camino and collecting his badge off 99. After the destruction of the Vichy Moon outpost, Echo and Fives are the last members of Domino Squad, and they are recruited into the 501st, and their big break in their careers come at the Battle of Camino. So the destruction of the Vichy outpost postponed any attack on Camino, but ultimately this battle would occur, and occur it did. So not much happens to Domino Squad here, except for Fives and Echo having to tell 99 about Heavy's heroic death, and the two clones defend their home violently, and become ARC Troopers in the end. So the next significant event in Domino Squad history comes in 20 BBY at Loda Seiyu. So Jedi Master Even Peel needed rescue from the Separatists on Loda Seiyu, so the 501st and Obi-Wan set out to rescue him. So Echo, who was once described as a man who lacked imagination and would just Echo orders, uh, seized the initiative when trying to escape Loda Seiyu by attempting to secure a shuttle. So unfortunately the shuttle would explode and whilst Fives made it out, Echo was presumed dead, leaving Fives to be the last member of Domino Squad. Or was he? So Echo survived the explosion, and was taken prisoner, and now we enter a truly tragic tale of Domino Squad, 
as Echo and Five's fates are deeply saddening. So although Echo survived, he was not living. He was experimented on, turned into a cyborg pawn for the CIS, being kept, uh, not being kept without a proper form of consciousness, being used solely as a battle computer. So having wires stuck inside you and not being able to think for yourself does sound pretty terrible. But the worst part of this is that Echo was being used to defeat his brothers. Essentially, Echo was being forced to inadvertently kill his friends, people he had served with and grown up with. So fortunately, Echo had somewhat of a happy ending, ultimately being rescued from Skako Minor and John the Bad Bat. Fives doesn't get any such happy ending, so he thought himself the last survivor of Domino Squad, losing Cut Up, Droid Bait and Heavy on Vivish Immune Outpost, and he thought he lost Echo on Lola Sayu. Fives then had to endure some of the Republic's darkest days, like the Battle of Umbara, where the Jedi General he had to trust on Krell betrayed him, where he had to witness clones firing on clones, resulting in unnecessary deaths of those he cared about. So along with seeing the horrors of the battlefield, Fives saw the horror of politics and corrupt leaders. So after his friend Tup killed the uh, Jedi General Tipler, he helped Tup back to Kamino and discovered the inhibitor tips, whilst losing another close friend. He then realised that every clone had these trips for some purpose, but no one would listen to him. Fives then removed a trip from his own head and tried to inform the Jedi about this. Fives manages to secure an audience with Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, where he discovers a crushing truth. The true purpose behind these trips. Palpatine, the true master of deception, framed Fives for an attempted assassination attempt on his life, a trick he would use again at the end of the war and this ultimately makes Fives a fugitive, making him have to hide from his own brothers. So Fives is able to tell Anakin and Rex about the trips, which would save Ahsoka and probably Rex later on, but then Fives is ultimately shot by Clone Trooper Fox. So this death is tragic because it shows the weight of known too much, and that doing the right thing doesn't always pay off. So the worst part is that Fox's blaster has a stun setting. Fox could have stunned Fives, and then he'd have gone to trial, but instead he shot Fives in the heart. There we have it, the tragedy of Domino Squad. Each member falling one by one in, what well, worse fashion each time. So three were killed in the line of duty. One lived, but had to endure experimentation and a horrific existence. And the final member suffered the worst fate of them all. Being so close to saving the Republic, but ultimately to be killed by a fellow clone. So there's definitely more to say about Fives and Echo, but did any clone squad suffer more than Domino Squad? Well, let me know in the comments. So thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you again very soon.